Hi guys, previously we added most of our skeleton skills to our skill tree manager and in this devlog, we will add the rest of the skeleton warrior skills to it. I will share my thought process on how the computations work for the rest of the skills and by the end of each skill, we will compare a low level version of each skill to their higher level form. For those of you who are new here, our team is currently working on a reverse RPG game where you play as a monster instead of the usual heroes in most RPG games that we play. Here you play as a wisp and transform into different monsters and your goal is to get rid of humans invading and exploiting your island home. Alright, let's first talk about this status bar UI. I made updates now to our status bars, and now reacts to your stats, namely our fortitude, essence, and stability. And for each monster type that we will be controlling, we will have different stats. Likewise, these stats also change when we level up certain skills that will affect these stats. For example, if you level up our fortitude, this will increase the fortitude levels that we have. Or, if our skeleton wears armor, to also add additional fortitude to your stat. These skill systems apply also to essence and stability. And these skill nodes will be scattered across our skill trees. They should look something like this in our skill tree menu, but they will have different colors. Red for fortitude, blue for essence, and green for stability. As of the moment, this icon is still a work in progress sketch, and currently Nari is working on the colored version for it. So I simply made this dynamic UI by referencing the values for our stats and modified the width of the UI depending on the values of that stat. With this new feature added, we now dynamically change our status bars depending on our monster form, skills, and equipment. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the rest of the skeleton warrior skills. Let's start with our shield bash skill. This skill is under the skill branch guard, which is a basic skill that we have when we have the ability to conjure the skeleton warrior. And to add shield bash to our tree, we just need to toggle it. So we just need to have level 0 and level 1. And level 1 is to have the ability activated. And level 0, which doesn't activate the guard, will just let you use a basic attack. Next on our list is our Essence and Stability Cost Reductions. For every time we use the Shield Bash skill, there will be an equivalent resource that will be affected by it. And these are our Essence and our Stability. And we have a skill that reduces the cost it takes when we use our Shield Bash. So this is very easy to implement. We just need a base cost and a reduction value which will be multiplied depending on the level of the cost reduction to get the final cost when the skill is activated. So in this case, we will have a base cost of 6 60 minus the reduction cost which is 7 multiplied by the level of the cost reduction skill. So for level 0 it should cost 60 to use the skill and for level 5 it should just cost 25. Same settings apply for both essence and stability costs. Next we have our damage reductions that will apply to our stats if we get hit by enemies while our guard is up. This is a bit tricky to implement since we have different factors to consider. First, we have different weapons in a game. Second, these weapons will have different base damages for each stat. And lastly, we will have different varieties of shields that we can equip and these shields also have different reductions. For now, since we still don't have different shield varieties yet, let's just focus on making a damage reduction system for the weapons that the mercenaries are using. For example, the short sword that the guards are using will have a fortitude damage of 10, 0 essence damage, and 10 stability damage. These stats will determine the damage dealt when we are not guarding. Then we need to make a damage reduction to this weapon, and this stat will determine the max reduction when we are guarding, and this max reduction will be the basis of our shield guard reductions. For our short sword, we have a max reduction of 10 for fortitude. This means that if we are guarding, the base damage for the sword, which is 10 minus the max reduction, which is also 10, this will give us 0 damage to our fortitude when our shield is up. But this though gives us stability damage of 5 since the reduction is only 5 and the damage for stability is 10. This reduction computation though is the max reduction and this will be reduced if the level of our reduction skill is low. Now that the foundations for our weapon damage and reductions are set, let's proceed to adding the reduction skills to our skill tree controller. To link our skill system to the existing damage reductions, we just need to make a base reduction which you can see here is a float value of 0.5 or 50%. Then a reduction amount which will multiply to our reduction level giving us total of 100% if the level of the reduction is 5 which is the max level. So to compute this, the math goes like this. 
The final damage is equal to damage minus the match reduction of that stat, multiplied by the skill reduction, which is base reduction plus reduction amount, multiplied by the level of the reduction. So for Fortitude, and let's say we're computing for a level 0 reduction, we have 10 minus 10 times 50%, is equal to the final damage of 5. As for a level 5 reduction, we compute it as 10 minus 10 times 50% plus 10 times the level which is 5. And this gives us a total percentage of 100%, giving us a final damage of 0. Now let's compare a level 0 to a level 5 reduction. So here we have a level 0 damage reduction for all our stats. On guard mode, we are taking a bit of fortitude and stability damage from the hits. Now here's a level 5 damage reduction for all our stats. And it only takes a small amount of stability damage from us. And no damage to fortitude at all. Basically, we don't get damaged by the guards if our shields are up. And we have max damage reduction for our fortitude. Next, let's tackle an easy one, our stability regen per second. We just need to have a base value for this and a boosted value per level. The match should look like this. Stability regen is equal to base value plus a boosted value times the level of the skill. So here's a comparison of a level 0 stability regen and a level 3 stability regen. You can clearly see here the difference between a low level stability regen skill and a high level one. Next, let's integrate our stability regen penalties when we use guard or sprint. For those of you who don't know, in our combat, when we guard or sprint, we made some penalties for the regeneration of our stability. We did this to add risk when performing safe actions like guarding and sprinting away from danger. So this is fairly simple to integrate, we just need to make a percentage value that will modify the existing stability regen values. So basically, the base value that we set here is 30%. This means, by default, if the skeleton guards or sprints, the stability regen will be reduced to 30% of its original regen speed. Then, we can level this one up up to 60% if we have a level 3 penalty reduction skill. This applies to both guarding and sprinting. Now let's test and compare a low level penalty reduction versus a high level penalty reduction. Let's start with guarding. So you can see, there's a huge difference in our stability regen when we have a max level stability penalty reduction skill. Clearly, leveling up this skill on our skill tree will be very beneficial for our skeleton warrior, since this monster type has a very low stability stat upgrade nodes in its skill tree. It would benefit the skeleton a lot if we upgrade all skills related to stability, since it is its weakness. Next, let's test and compare sprinting. Again, as what we saw when we tested guarding, we can see a clear difference in our stability regen when we are sprinting. This is very crucial for a skeleton warrior since this type of monster relies on hit and run tactics because it easily breaks having very low max stability. So now that we covered most of the skills on our skill tree, in our next dev log we'll tackle the remaining skills to complete this skill tree development series. I'd like to thank my Patreons for supporting the development of this plight. See you on the next devlog where we complete integrating all our skills to our skill tree manager. Till next time.